Time to look at another multi-sensor for Home Assistant. This time we will be looking at Apollo Automation MSR1 and how it fits in your smart home. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Apollo Automation MSR1 is a multi-sensor board powered by ESP32C3 Mini controller. It is packed with so many things that it really stands out from the competitors. It features not just MM wave sensor, but also LUX and UV sensor, temperature, humidity and pressure sensor, and if you choose so, it can also host CO2 sensor. Plus, it has RGB LED that can be controlled and used from within Home Assistant, buzzer and even some exposed GPIO pins on the back side. But that's not actually all. It can also be featured or used as a Home Assistant Bluetooth proxy. So this really is all-in-one device. And it's so tiny. And everything you've heard is packed in just 40 by 32 by 13 centimeters. It's packed in such a tiny package that you'll first think that somebody scammed you out of your money. But no, all is there with some genius twists and turns. For example, while you can buy the device in option with or without CO2 sensor, and yes, it has impact on the price, which is a nice feature because not everybody does need CO2 sensor. It also has some additions that can improve the overall usability of this device. For example, you can buy articulated stand for it, for just 5 additional dollars. And this stand allows you to glue it or fix it to the wall and then change the angle or position of the sensor to match the position where you want it to point at. Or, if you are a lucky one and have a USB adapter that has on top USB-C port, yes, you can actually buy the outlet mount add-on or mount with the US plug for only $20 more. Again, everything here is very nicely engineered and I really applaud the idea of using the backplate to be interchangeable so you can change it and use it as a normal backplate or a backplate with a joint. That's a really awesome option. If you want to compare it with some other sensors, um, MM wave sensors or microwave sensors, let's compare it to these three. For example, if we compare it with the everything presence light, it's so tiny that you can probably fit two or three of these Apollo sensors inside the Louis sensor one. Of course, the EP light has option for you to change the microwave sensors, but using this millimeter wave sensor inside the MSR one is an awesome idea. This sensor is well known in the community and a lot of people are using it, especially the people that are doing DIY projects and building their own sensors. It has been used a lot in home assistant community. Yes, it may not be the best in class, but it still works pretty okay. In terms of setup, setup is really nicely done. I will guide through it, but also check out the documentation. The wiki page is awesome, not just for this device, but also other devices that Apollo is making. For example, for the setup, you can just follow these simple steps. Getting started or the first step is so easy. You plug the power into this board, you open your mobile phone, go to the access point of the device and you will know it by the name of the device, select your Wi-Fi network, type in the password and press OK. That's it. Device is set up, at least the first part. The second part is adding it to Home Assistant. If you have a normal smart home network, and by normal I don't mean some prosumer type of over-engineered network with VLANs, routing, subnets, etc., the device should pop up automatically in Home Assistant. Click on it, configure it, press submit and device should be in Home Assistant in a matter of seconds. After the device has been added to Home Assistant, my recommendation is to unplug it, plug it to the power bank and take it to your garden, if you have garden or outside. Leave it there for 2-3-4 minutes so that sensor can breathe in the outside air. Hopefully the outside air is of a good quality. After a couple of minutes, you can go to the web page of this device. I don't know if I mentioned, but yes, you can access everything not just by the ESP Home Integration Home Assistant. You can actually go to the web page of this device and there click on Calibrate SCD 40 to 420 ppm. If you click it here, 
or in Home Assistant if you click on Calibrate and press this button, the device should be calibrated on the fresh air. When we are already on this web page or the browser page of the device itself, as you can see, all the data pulled from the sensors is here. There are some things that you can configure here. For example, offset for the humidity and temperature. This is especially nice touch because a lot of people are always telling that having this sensor or any kind of a temperature or humidity sensor besides the ESP board can be impacted by the temperature there. So you can use these fields here to calibrate or create offset based on the values from this device. Then we have information about the LUX sensor, RGB, we can turn it on and off, radar control, etc, etc. These last options here are used to calibrate the microwave sensor. But I'll mention that in just a couple of seconds. Once again, if we return to Home Assistant and see what options are available in Home Assistant, they are grouped by the categories as with any ESP Home integration. For example, I think this part is here the configuration part, or this part here is configuration part, and those are the things that you usually will not have in your UI. In your UI, you may be using this RGB light, and yes, as I mentioned, you can control this RGB light. You can turn it on and off from Home Assistant, but you can also change the color of the light and use that, for example, in your automations. So, for example, when the air quality drops, the LED can turn to red, so you know that you should open the windows. When the blue LED is on, the temperature may be below the threshold that you set for your heating, etc., etc. The other values we can use in Home Assistant are UV index or ambient light or LUX in our case here. Those are the things that you can use in your automation. For example, if there is too much light, close the covers or put down the shades or whatever you have. Or if it goes dark, turn on the lights. If UV index is too high, you can send notification to the mobile phone of the users that the UV light is too high and that they should watch out and stay indoors or in the shade or put a sun cream or whatever. I already mentioned the CO2 sensor. If, for example, you put this sensor in your bedroom, there is example or there are values in the wiki you can check later on. The link to the wiki, to the shop, to everything will be down in the video description. You can use those values to start the HVAC system or to start the ventilation or to get the warning that the quality of the air in the bedroom is too low and that you should open the windows and let some fresh air in. But if we look at the main advantage of this sensor, as we said, this is also microwave sensor and it can be used for presence but also motion detection. It is set up in such a way that we have three zones and you can play with that zones in the documentation. And I really do recommend that you go to the documentation because I will not be going into details. My videos are always too long. If I would be showing you how to calibrate and set up the sensor, we will probably finish around the new year. But the quickest thing I can show you on how to calibrate the sensor is by doing following. On the device page, if you haven't added everything to the UI or Lovelace in Home Assistant, and I really do recommend that you add just these controls, maybe if you need them, and the sensor values. Everything else should be actually under the hood. So if you haven't added all those things to the UI, unlike me, go to the bottom of the list and there is something called Radar Engineering Mode. Click on it. And the way it works, it will now enable these data here. This data is usually not visible and it is visible only when this engineering mode is enabled. Let me show you. If I disable it, we lose all of the values here. If I enable it, we get all those values back here. So for example, you install this sensor inside your living room and you want to have two zones. You, for example, have one zone near the entrance or the stairway where you want to control the stair slice or the entrance light. In this case, what you would do, you would turn the engineering mode on and then based on the values of the sensors, you would play with the thresholds, still and moving thresholds for that specific gate. Gate you can consider something as similar to zone. Then move to the sitting position in front of your TV and check once again the values here and based on the values here, set up the gates here minimum and maximum values so that it gets triggered if you are sitting in the living room. And based on that, you can easily customize all of the values for all of the zones or all of the gates inside Home Assistant for this device. But as I said, the documentation is really well written. Go to the calibration page, how to tune microwave sensor using Home Assistant, 
and on this page, calibration page, you will find two videos. First one is how to calibrate using gates and zones, and second one, how to tune your sensor using the radar engineering mode. For all of you that want to learn more about this device, under the hood things, want to create their own case for it or look at the code, everything is available on the GitHub repository. For example, 3D files, where you can find all the 3D files. So if you have a 3D printer, for example, Creality Ender 3 V3KE, and the link to that video will be up here, the video I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, you could print your own case or update the case or work on the case and get even more out of this sensor than just buying the sensor device plus the kits or upgrades you want to buy. In the datasheet folder, you can find all the datasheets for all of the sensors that are on the board, including the ESP32 C3 Mini. Examples is filled with examples that you can use in your automations. For example, this base LD2410 YAML, then we have a fridge dashboard, CO2 is too damn high, CO2 is too damn high buzzer, trash night, holiday, etc. All the code is available here. The question is, in today's market, where we have off-the-shelf sensors such as Sonoff sensor, I also did video a couple of weeks or months ago, where we have uh, everything presence light sensor, where we have other companies producing similar sensors. Is there market for such a device? In my opinion, yes, because I've not seen so far sensor packed as this one is in so tiny package. And also it works nicely. One thing I must say is sorry to Justin. I really apologize for not being able to do video on this device sooner. And yes, I really do like it. And yes, I do recommend this device because it's ESP home based. It's local only. It doesn't need cloud. And it has everything that you really can think of inside very tiny package. Guys from Apollo Automation really did an awesome job. And I must congratulate them on that. As far as the price, price of 36 US dollars is not that much. I know for that price you will not get CO2 sensor, but as I said, you may not need CO2 sensor in each of the sensors. For example, if you buy four or five of them, you only may need CO2 sensor in one of two. So you can save up the money on this expensive part or expensive module and still get additional sensor values that you will not get normally from other devices available on the market. If you want more information about this device, want to check out the documentation, the calibration videos, but also other videos they made on this product, I will be leaving all of the links down in a video description. So check it out there. And as always, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it not just means a lot to me, but it really helps the channel. YouTube sees your thumbs up and then recommends this video and similar videos to other people on the internet. And while you are already pressing thumbs up, don't forget to check that you are already subscribed, because I'm trying to reach 1 million subscribers in a couple of weeks, which is impossible, but still, I want to try. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always find me on my Discord server. The link to it is down in the video description. You can also find me on Twitter. Instagram, but you can leave comment here. And I do apologize for everybody that was leaving comments for the last week or so, but I was on a vacation and I was enjoying my vacation time with my daughter in London. I will try to read all of the comments and reply them as soon as possible. And before I end up the video, I also want to thank all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, shared or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month become a YouTube channel member. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can do a super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye-bye and have 